just been listening to the radio on Radio 4 here, and there's a discussion between the Tory and Labour uh, MPs, members of Parliament, about uh, what the Labour MP referred to as a potential national care service, which is something that's similar to the National Health Service in here in the Britain, which, but the National Care Service will be a, uh, a system that looks after old folk, basically. So at the moment, if you are uh, over the age of 65 and you, I don't know, you get ill or you get dementia or something like that and you're not looked after by your family, uh, care in, in care homes is extremely expensive. Uh, you know, and most people lose their houses or uh, most people's families have to cough up thousands and thousands of pounds. You know, it can be a couple of thousand pounds a week to keep someone in a care home. So it's very expensive. And there are state-run care homes for people who have no resources. But they're not great, to be honest. I mean, my mum's in one right now, and she's very fortunate. She's in a really good one. She's lucky. Uh, my uncle went into one, and, and uh, it was rubbish, and he died in one. So, uh, and, uh, well, of course, everybody does, but uh, he didn't die in a very nice one, or in a very nice way. So, um, yeah, so there's a bit of a problem with that. But what's interesting about this discussion was about how they were referring to it, because they were talking about how to pay for it, because, of course, if it's a state-run system... Uh, it has to be paid through taxation or something like it, um, or through some or through voluntary or uh, involuntary contributions where the national health service is paid for through national national uh, health insurance system. And uh, at the moment, they're talking about it being paid for by what the what the commentator and what the Tory politician is referring to as the death tax, and it's a it's a. It, it's a really interesting bit of framing that's going on there because um, not only the Tory politician but the, the BBC announcer, the, the guy who was doing the interviews on the radio, he was also calling it the death tax. And basically what that simply means is that if, if someone, if, you know, if obviously if someone dies and they, they have some kind of an estate, some kind of, um, uh, they own some property, then there'll be a, a, a tax levied at that point on that estate a certain percentage will go to the state and that money will be ploughed into the provision of care for other elderly people. But it's a death tax, they're calling it. And that's really, yeah, as I say, that's really interesting because a few years ago when this discussion was started, there was two terms for it. There was the death tax, which was what the Tories tend to be calling it, or people who were opposed to it called it, and the inheritance tax, which is how it was framed by Labour or people who were in support of it. Because essentially it's the same thing. I mean, if someone dies and they have an estate, that estate, you know, the, the property they own, is passed on to whoever the next of kin is or whoever's named in their will. And so that money is taxed. So if that money's going to be taxed, it's you just how you think about it is in two ways. You either think about it as a tax on the person who's died on their estate, or you think of it as a tax on the person who is about to inherit that cash. So it's either a death tax or an inheritance tax. But it feels really different. I mean, and this is something that um, has been talked about in the way that George Lakoff talks about uh, political debate in other ways. You know, he talks, George Lakoff is a, uh, I guess he was a cognitive linguist or something like that. But um, he he's talks about how framing certain political debates in using certain metaphors, particularly in certain language, just changes the nature of the debate entirely. He wrote a really nice book called Don't Think of an Elephant about the different ways in which the uh, Democratic and Republican parties in the States talk about uh, their policies and make people think differently about the same, essentially the same policy just by the way you think about it and the, um, and the way it's discussed and what kind of metaphors are deployed. And the same thing is going on here with this death tax thing. That when you think of it as a death tax, as a tax on the dead, it, pr it prompts a very different set of responses to thinking of it as a an inheritance tax, which is uh, a tax, as, a, as I said, you know, on the people who will inherit the cash. A death tax, a tax on the dead, feels like grave robbing or feels like um, the exploitation of someone weak or the exploitation of someone incapable of defending themselves. It's, it has that kind of a ring to it. Whereas an inheritance tax feels much more like... Um, obliging people who've earned money without doing anything for it, who've, who've gained wealth through no effort of their own, people who are basically living on the backs of their forebears, their parents and their grandparents, who are basically just 
um, just coming into wealth because their parents or grandparents or their family more historically has, has somehow managed to accumulate wealth. And, and taxing those people who basically did nothing to gain that wealth doesn't have anything like the same negative ring to it as, as I say, a death tax, like exploiting the dead. And that, of course, is why, why these terms are being used. I mean, there's, there's no accident. The, um, the Tory guy on here, the Conservative politician, and the Conservatives in the UK, of course, traditionally look after the interests of the wealthy. Of course, it's within, it's within their interest to, um, to argue against that taxation because they're wealthy already, they don't want their wealth taken away from them, they already have private health insurance, they already make full use of expensive care homes, they don't want to contribute towards a welfare state or towards a national care service. Many of them wouldn't contribute towards a national health service if it wasn't obligatory. Um, and so it's within their interests to cast that particular taxation in as negative light as possible. And so they don't use the word inheritance tax, never use that. They always use the word death tax to keep us focused on this idea that taking that cash and using it for, uh, for social good is, you know, this is, is like a tax on the dead. I think it's a real shame, though, that the Labour politician on the, t on the radio, um, I mean, he argued his case all right, although it wasn't a great argument generally, but he, he, although he didn't use the word death tax, he never used any other term. He didn't... Um, he didn't try and, try and dig his way out of that whole metaphorical system that he was kind of caught up in, really. And even, as I say, even the announcer, even the, the interview on the radio, was also using this term death tax, and at no point did the Labour politician question him on it and, and, and kind of force the debate to be about uh, the inheritance of undeserved wealth. Uh, and, and wouldn't it be a better idea to perhaps use that undeserved wealth or that... that that, in it, that wealth which has been accumulated through the um, sure through the actions of one or two or more people in that particular family, but using the resources of a nation to go back into the nation more broadly and contribute towards, an, as in this case, a national care service. <sighs> yeah, death. It's a stupid idea. I mean, de de death. Of course, it should be a death tax. Of course, of course, it should be an inheritance tax. <laughs> Unbelievable. Then yeah, yeah.